Today, we'll be speaking with James Lantier, the CEO of Mindset Pharma, that's M-E-S-T on the CSE. So today, you announced the filing of a provisional patent covering next generation DMT and 5-MEO DMT. Can you shed some color on this application? So uh, just so everyone knows, DMT and 5-MEO DMT are, uh, are a class of uh, are types of psychedelic drugs that are um, pretty well known for inducing a, a really uh, profound and really short uh, psychedelic trip. And they've gotten a lot of attention uh, in the last few, really last couple of years as uh, you know, all this steam has picked up behind um, the, the concept of, of adopting or adapting psychedelics uh, into uh, you know, use as, as medications. Um, because uh, of, of not only how, how strong the, the psychedelic experience is, but how short it is. And that, I think, that a the lot of, of groups in, uh, in the market see as, as potentially being a key to kind of solving one of the shortcomings of, of psychedelic um, medication, which is just how long the trip can be and how long, uh, therefore, you'd have to spend in a, in a therapist's office. So um, Mindset has been working on uh, really new versions of these drugs that, uh, that also address um, one, of the, one of their shortcomings, which is their um, safety issues. And, and so we've talked for a while publicly about our family four, which is, uh, which is our, our next generation, our family of next generation DMT and, and 5-MeO DMT uh, drug candidates. And that family is actually part of our collaboration with uh, Otsuka Pharmaceuticals, which, uh, as we've talked about before, is really a first of its kind uh, collaboration in the space between a psychedelic biotech and really one of the world's top um, psychiatry uh, drug companies. So this announcement today is, I think, really just a, an, an, a great example of kind of the, the mindset um, drug design engine at work. So we already have some patents filed on, uh, on some, some really promising drug candidates that fit within that family four. And what we announced today is that we've really expanded the size of that family um, by filing a new patent application on some new designs that we've been working on. Uh, again, that really, and when I say a, a great example of, of the mindset drug design engine at work, um, what I really mean is what we're, we're doing, we're constantly innovating and constantly really designing and testing and screening um, new psychedelic drugs. And we're constantly, we're in a constant feedback loop where we're applying what we learn um, and what we've learned to date from all of that uh, all of that uh, scientific work to, to try to create and tweak uh, and make better, you know, drugs that are going to work um, more safely and predictably. And that's exactly what we've done here today. So this patent application expands the universe of, uh, of compounds that we're looking at under family four. And if you're, if you're in the drug, uh, you know, development business, um, that's absolutely critical. You know, really what you're, what you're trying to do is kind of maximize your shots on goal for getting to a successful new drug, because typically it takes a lot of different candidates to get to, you know, one successful drug. And, and, you know, we've just, we've just done that today. So, um, so this is a great example of exactly what we're trying to do here at Mindset, which is to really design and develop, you know, better, uh, better drugs. Your four families of drugs cover microdosing and microdosing. Can you give us a walkthrough of an end use case scenario for these drugs? So why don't I start by, by stepping back to explain um, you know, what, what we mean or, or what others mean when they, when they use those words. So there's really two, two ways in which it's envisioned that um, you know, once they're regulated, um, physicians and patients will be, you know, will be using psychedelic medication. Um, by macrodosing, what we're referring to is, uh, is, is the, the practice of, you know, going into a, a specialized, like probably a specialized clinic or a therapist's office and taking a, a dose of a, of a psychedelic medication that's significant enough that you undergo a, 
uh, a, a, a major, you know, psychedelic trip, usually have some therapy on the front end, the trip is supervised, and then some therapy on, uh, on the back end. So it's a, it's a macro dose of, of the drug. Um, that is the model of psychedelic psychotherapy that at today has the most evidence behind it. And that's what everybody is studying. Microdosing refers to um, the practice uh, of taking a small amount of a psychedelic drug, small enough that you don't actually undergo uh, a, a, a psychedelic, you don't actually have the uh, psychedelic experience. Um, and, and today, actually, this this approach, there's a lot less data around it. Um, it hasn't been studied as widely, but you know, users uh, or people who practice it, um, uh, you know, quite a few of them have some some pretty good things to to say about it. What I think it's important to understand, we're, you know, we're really just at the at sort of the beginning um, of this sort of psychedelic renaissance of of uh, the readoption of of psychedelic drugs. Um, in, uh, in the treatment of mental health and, and really at mindset, what we envision and, and what's, what's coming into, into view really is, a, is a future where, you know, there, there are a, a wide range of different types of psychedelic drugs, different durations, different treatment methodologies, all of the, the work to, to study and, and set, um, you know, these, these parameters up is, is happening today, but what mindset's goal from the beginning has been, let's do the upfront hard scientific work to design as many differentiated psychedelic drugs that have been optimized for safety, predictability, um, that meet all these different criteria, whether that's for macrodosing or whether that's for we can call it microdosing, but really what we're talking about is kind of take home, take home medication that is still going to have some of those same um, benefits that that psychedelic drugs offer. And and so, you know, there's lots of lots of researchers, lots of physicians, physicians out there today working on exactly what are the right characteristics of all these different psychedelic drugs. And it's it's really mindset that um, is, uh, you know, is, is one of the groups leading the way, trying to engineer, uh, as many different optimized drugs that meet that those criteria as possible. Can you elaborate on your family three psilocybin like drug for microdosing? Cause there's a clear contrast between that and your macrodosing drugs as well. So of our, of the four families that we talk about publicly today at Mindset, three, three of them really fit within that macrodosing paradigm that we talked about. The, the, the fourth, or what we, what we call family three, um, is, is a family that is really kind of the mirror opposite of, of the other three. And, and we think it could work really well for, um, for a, a microdosing or, or a take-home medication profile. And, and, and really, you know, today, macrodose, microdosing, you know, pe by people who do it, it they, they, they take a small amount of a, of a regular psychedelic drug uh, and, the, and they try to make it small enough that they don't undergo a psychedelic experience. Mindset's family three, um, in our minds, has, a, has really superior characteristics, the type of characteristics you'd actually want if you were going to purposely design a drug um, that would, you know, stay with you throughout the day, but, but not, um, not induce a psychedelic uh, uh, experience. And so what we see when we profile family three um, in, in testing is it, is it activates many of the same receptors as, say, psilocybin does, for instance, but it has a much uh, lower, sort of gentler uh, effect, and we believe won't uh, likely induce a full psychedelic experience. We we think, and I and I think it's it's uh, it's it's pretty easy to see that um, you know taking a drug uh, as a microdosing experience, i.e., taking you know uh, taking it on it regularly every day, every other day, rather than undergoing a, a full psychedelic experience really is going to be a much, if it works out, is going to be a much easier way for patients to, uh, to accept, uh, you know, this, this type of medication, a psychedelic trip is just not, you know, it's not going to be for everybody. And additionally, there are, you know, there are def definitely patient groups where, uh, 
you know, you really wouldn't want them having a full psychedelic experience. And I, I'm thinking about patient groups like, you know, like children with ADHD or, or the elderly suffering from, you know, dementia, where, you know, we believe that, that uh, those, those types of indications could benefit from some of the neuroprotective effects of psychedelic drugs. But if you could somehow take the trip out, that would be a, a much easier, you know, way to, to treat those, those patient groups. So psychedelic stocks have been very volatile this year with some great news coming out of the drug discovery and development side and ups and downs coming out on the legislative side. So what would you say to investors who are taking a look at this space and then also considering taking a position in Mindset Pharma? Don't be dissuaded or, or swayed by you know, the ups and downs that you see in, in the public markets. And I, I don't think that in any way is, uh, is, you know, correlated at all with the overall, you know, direction of the space. The, at the you know, the medical psychedelic sector um, has the potential to be every bit as big, if not, you know, much bigger than the, than the cannabis sector but it is a completely different market. It will be a medical, at least for the foreseeable future, a, a medical market. And so you have to think about what are the important things to you know, the institutional investors that support biotech and, and biopharma. So typically, uh, you know, they, institutions uh, get involved, the closer you get drug, that, that you know, a, a class of drugs gets to you know, human use. And we're getting ever closer. There was positive data last year from Compass. There'll be more data this year coming from one of the key or, or early next year from the, really the, the key phase three MDMA trial. All of these will be kind of signposts for um, institutions who we talk to regularly who are really uh, getting more and more interested in the space as they see all the evidence mount. There's also been lots of money in the private markets go into psychedelic companies. So there's no shortage of capital that's interested in the space and there's no shortage of positive data. Psychedelic drugs are uh, you know, not just this funny pipe dream. They, they very much will be you know, a reality and a very big reality. As far as mindset is concerned, what I would um, really suggest is that you, you, th it, you know, if you're that you think about what is important to, um, again, to institutions uh, that biotech institutions, and when you know when you when you look at what really differentiates mindset, um, mindset is the first and the only psychedelic company with a uh, major pharma partnership. We announced in January. Um, a you know really first of its kind partnership with Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. That is the ultimate uh, you know due diligence endorsement of a I think of 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 a, of a company in the market. Um, this was you know the, the culmination of a long process, and uh, and it's a great partnership for Mindset where we get a tremendous amount of financial and operational support from Otsuka really de-risks our pathway to the clinic and, and to us getting, you know, drugs to, to market. So um, I think, you know, it's important for investors to, to realize the there's a, not a long game here. It's, it's coming and it's coming soon. And, uh, and I think, you know, look at, look at what is it that is important to, you know, to pharma companies in the space, you know, IP data, and mindset, uh, I would say, you know, compares incredibly favorably to, to others in the field.